So, George, welcome back. Be back, Dave. So, this is your second time being on, and you've got some interesting stuff to report about things that have been happening with your with your doctor, who um, turns out to be a bit of a spammer. But before we get to that, before we get to that, um, could you give us an update on how things have been going for you on uh, Carnival? Sure, Candy. Just to point out that I'm, I'm actually reached out to you this time because of your um, six-minute video about uh, betrayed. You felt betrayed by the doctors, um, so uh, I, I have a very similar experience to report. But to give you the update on Carnival, I'm, I'm still going along very nicely. Thank you. Uh, probably actually getting better even last time we spoke because I'm now um, not exactly blind. I, I'm eating far more beef. Uh, my main meal every day is. Um, 25% fat minced, minced beef, which my wife air fries for me in one hit the, on a Monday. And then I microwave it every day. Uh, also, we are eating a lot of steak. Um, we discovered a really good out, uh, online outlet here for sirloins. So I'm having quite a few sirloins during the week. Um, I might have some eggs with that as well. Um, and also, I eat some smoked mackerel, the Atlantic mackerel, which is a wild fish, which is high in omega-3. Um, and so yeah, it's and I use cheese, uh, cheese as a, a carnival junk food, if you like, uh, you know, as a, as a as a snack. But there's no sign of any plant food in my diet at all. I was, actually, no, I'm, I'm lying because following my your mind you, the last time when we touched on the alcohol, so one of your viewers kindly pointed out that actually alcohol does strip the body of vitamin C. So I've taken a measure, and what I'm doing is I'm drinking a pint of water with the, the juice of one lemon squeeze in it every day. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not high in fructose, and it? it is high in vitamin C. So it's kind of a, a an insurance policy, I think you might call it. Um, so yeah, uh, but other than that, yeah, I still carry on to, uh, with the with the alcohol. It's not caused me any particular grief, and I'm still carrying on with coffee. So I'm not the perfect carnival, but I am, you know, close to this. when it comes to solid foods. I am pretty much the, the perfect carnival, and I'm feeling great. Um, I think I complained last time. My knees were still cause me trouble. They do a bit still, but I. Um, walked down to the post office again this morning and I did notice they were feeling better than they have for a long time so yeah everything everything is good really. everything is very good nice and so for someone watching who hasn't seen your first interview I'll leave a link in the description to that one but um, could you update us just on some of the highlights you've experienced on Carnival um, Crikey. <laughs> uh, yeah, so obviously the first the first thing, that, the one that everybody knows is everybody wants to talk about is the weight loss, because I did weigh uh, 133 kilograms when I was diagnosed with metabolic syndrome. Uh, my most recent doctor weighing uh, was two kilograms with, with well, I was closed. Um, I'm seeing, uh, it, as we're in the winter, uh, on my morning weigh-ins, I'm seeing between 89 and 91 one, one kilograms. Uh, but I was 87 back in back at the end of the summer, so that's that's dramatic. And people really, you know, they do notice that and they want to talk about it. The well, I was never, as I said, I, I'm an accidental carnival. I never intended to go full carnival. I intended to go low carb and reverse type two diabetes. So I actually managed that on, on low carb keto. But it was when I discovered Zoe Harkin and York and Patrick, Dr. Paul Mason, and their take on fiber that I realised that I fiber is actually very bad for you so i cut it out of my diet and um I, I cured my ibs so the ibs went away so i lost all the weight reverse type 2 diabetes smashed my triglycerides from 4.3 in march of 22 to uh, 1.2 in august of 22 um what else was this? a lot of the, the aches and pains have gone um so yeah it's absolutely massive um the the results i the results i've had and and the the brain fog is gone as well, and the mental clarity is is back there now, um, and the depression as well. Because I was um, many years ago when I when I first started going downhill, I was actually diagnosed with um, stress and depression and got on Prozac for six months. So yeah, but there's no no danger of that ever happening again. Nice and. So this is probably a good point to transition into the other thing we're going to talk about because your doctor must be ecstatic with all these health improvements, right? Okay, so, um, yeah, when I 
was first diagnosed with metabolic syndrome in March of 22. The knee-jerk reaction of the doctor was to issue him as a prescription for statins and metformin. But as I told him on the last time, they sat on the kitchen table until I'd done some research. Then they ended up in the bin uh, because I basically discovered the low uh, the low carb approach to reversing type 2 diabetes. So when I went back in August of 22, and it was uh, my type 2 diabetes was in British terms re uh, reduced from 50 mmol down to 36. Um, yeah, so that was type 2 diabetes reversed. Just to give you uh, our international viewers the, the figures, pre-diabetes is 42 to, uh, to 48 mmol. So I was two points into the diabetes range. Uh, 49 and 50 is anything above that is diabetes. So I went from being two points into the diabetic range to six points below the pre-diabetic range without any form of medication other than uh, going low carb keto. Um, so yeah, um, but you asked me if the doctor is ecstatic. Right, in August 2022, I had a very good team, diabetes team. Uh, I didn't speak to any doctors, only, only to the nurse practitioners. And they were absolutely amazed and absolutely delighted for me. Now, the most important thing we can talk about here is the fact that they acknowledged that my LDL was much raised, but they said, oh, don't worry about that. We're, we're not concerned about that. Um, we we're only concerned about the HDL to triglyceride ratio. And apparently that was very, very good. So they said, yeah, there's nothing to worry about. The LDL is nothing to worry about. Um, this time around, unfortunately, I've had a pretty bad experience. And, um, yeah, they, they, the raised ADL, LDL is the only thing that they're interested in. Uh, and they're trying to sell me a statin again. So that's, um, and no doctor has spoken to me. I mean, I've only received a um, text message from a doctor I've never even heard of. So yeah, it's, I'm, I'm afraid that what was a good experience in August 2022 with the surgery has become a really seriously bad experience this time around. So that's where we are with that, I'm afraid. Wow. So, like, can, can you elaborate uh, at all on, on what the interaction was like when you went in and it was just LDL, LDL, LDL? No, it was, well, yeah, it wasn't so much that. It was, I went to a nurse I'd never been before and uh, to before. And she was, shall we say, business like, to say the least, abrupt um, and quite frankly rude. So, that was a very disappointing experience i'll make some notes there just before. so you know um and one thing to point out is that i haven't had the bloods done since august 22 and this was now january the 19th 24 and she was very cross with me why had i let it lapse so i pointed out to her actually it wasn't me that let it lapse it was you people that let it lapse because on october the 11th i booked a day off work um and that's take quite a bit of prior planning and I had uh, my blood booked for 0, 0940 hours in the morning and at 0, 0815 hours on that day I got a phone call from them cancelling because they didn't have enough people so basically it was them that let it lapse not me because it takes quite a bit of uh, I'm working in construction industry and it takes quite a bit of prior planning to actually get the um to get it done so I said well here I am uh, you know I'll come back in she said oh we must have been short people that day no apology no recognition of the fact that she was accusing me of something which which they were guilty of. So that wasn't a good start to, to, the, um, to the whole experience. Let's see what else. Um, right, so first thing, to, first thing was that she was reluctant to review my previous um, results. There was too much trouble finding it on the computer. But we did uh, eventually find it on the, on the computer. And just to run through the results again, um, I was 50 mmol type 2 diabetic in March of 22. Triglycerides were 4.3, which is in the high range. Uh, my weight was 133 kilograms, and blood pressure was 140 or something over over 80 something. Um, so yeah, I was definitely met in the metabolic syndrome. Now I went back in August 2022. Uh, my weight had dropped from 133 kilograms to 109 kilograms. Uh, my diabetes was not there. Anymore. 36 mmol. My triglycerides were now 1.2, which is below the 1.7 uh, threshold for the normal range. And my blood pressure was pretty much the same. It's, that's pretty much state constant. But I do suffer from, I think we call it white, white coat syndrome. And as much my blood blood pressure goes up when I'm nervous because I want it to be good, but it, is, but it, may, but it makes me nervous. So that's that a bit of a 
problem there. So yeah, so we she reluctantly reviewed those. She said, "Oh, you put your type two diabetes into remission." There was no sort of comment on it at all. But um, so this time around, we went we went through the weight and the blood pressure. Blood pressure once again was under forty something over eighty eight, so a slightly raised uh, white coat syndrome. Um, and she weighed me in at ninety two kilos. No sort of comment of oh, crikey, you've lost a further seventeen kilos since the last time. That's a, a total now forty one kilos. There was no delight there. There was no sort of well done. Or there was no feedback on that whatsoever. And she took my bloods. Uh, what else? We, yeah, blood pressure, weight, and bloods, isn't it? So yeah. So and then I said, all right, okay. When when do I get the, the results? She said, oh, uh, we don't give the results in this. And they say anything's wrong. So you won't hear from us. And they say anything's wrong. I said, well, the last time, I said, I got a phone call from, from Sandra congratulating me, saying I've done incredibly well with you knowing, giving me my results. No, no, no. You can only, you can only get the results if they're bad. Uh, she said, you have to go on the NHS uh, patient, access, um, patient access app. I said, well, how do I get that? She said, I don't really know. She said, my sister had to do, do mine because I didn't really understand it. So she said, go, no, go outside and see the, uh, as you're going out, um, go and see reception. And ask them to set you up with the NHS app. So I'm like, okay, I'll do that. I'll cooperate. Why not? There's no skin off my nose. So I went back to reception and I asked about it. And the receptionist rolled her eyes and God, you know, this is too much hassle. She said, right, let's see a photo ID. So I said, photo ID? I said, I've just booked in here and you've just basically, you've seen me with that. You didn't need, oh, I need photo ID for that. I said, well, I'm not carrying it. So I said, I don't have this will ever happen. And I said, thank you for your time and basically left. Um, so that was, yeah, that was a very bad experience compared to what was 2022. And sure enough, I got the, the following set, the, the follow up text message from a doctor on, on the Monday. No mention of my um, it's diabetes status, no mention of the HbA1c, no mention of the fact that I lost so much weight, no, much, no mention of anything else wrong, no mention of triglycerides, only he was interested in total cholesterol. My total cholesterol was 7.1. And the threshold for a statin is five, so I'm two point one above, which is to be expected because I'm on a high fat, saturated fat diet. But they're not interested in the fact that I've reversed type two diabetes. They're not interested in the fact that I've lost forty one kilograms. They're not interested in the fact that I smashed my triglycerides. They just want to sell drugs, and I am the perfect target, as I believe you you were, because my um, MMR is up to seven point one. Now, the modern effect of this is basically, as we all know. Uh, the carnival movement is growing rapidly and we have a lot of new carnivals who are following the, the, the high saturated fat diet. So this is going to be a problem, a massive problem for the carnival community in the future. Because whenever we go back, we're going to go back in perfect health, but we're going to be told that we need statins. So really what I want, to, the reason I reached out to you David is to talk to you about this today and what have we got, what weapons have we got in our arm to actually push these people back. Yes, yeah, I will call people. Um, yeah, so that, that's what I really wanted to discuss with you because I was very impressed by your betrayed video. And that's the reason why I reached out to you because I suddenly realized that there's going to be hundreds of thousands of people out there who are going to need our help. So, how do we help these people, Dave? And this is what really I wanted to discuss with you today. Firstly, I, I mean, I've got a couple of things I just want to touch on regarding the story you've just told me. The first is. Have you ever seen Little Britain? Yeah, the, uh, yes, I have seen Little Britain. <laughs> the story of the receptionist reminds me of the um, the bank teller. You know, computer says no. The computer says yes. no. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, actually, you know, they kind of make sure I've, uh, uh, I've been, been watching on YouTube a, a few of the. Do you remember the Fact Fighters um, sketch from Little Britain? Yeah. I've been watching watching those back as a carnival and it's absolutely hilarious you know, uh, because uh, mm. he played a, um, a, a, you know, a fat fighter's um, what he, in, influencer called Marjorie Dawes and it's absolutely hilarious especially watching it as a carnival um, so if anybody yeah if anybody would like to go on to you, you just put in Marjorie Dawes YouTube or fat fighter's YouTube and you'll get lots of little uh, sketches about it and they are absolutely hilarious they really are yeah it's awesome. But the the second thing is, just before we get on to, you know, um, what potentially we can do, the second thing is, as a follow-on to the video I did as well, like these doctors 
they cannot get past LDL. It's like a barrier. It's like, well, your cholesterol's high. I can't look at anything else. I can't I, I focus on anything else. Yeah, I watched it back this morning. <laughs> I've, I've, to, just to remind myself what you actually said about it. And you said about, oh, the shiny ball. Look at the shiny ball. And, you know, it, it basically, it's like you, know, you liken it to a child looking at a shiny ball, but it's almost like a cat. You know, when you're playing with a cat and dragging a shiny ball along with it, they just focus on that. They, they lose focus on everything else. Yeah, so the, the, yeah, so this LDL thing is, which has actually been disproved, as we're going to talk about in, um, in, in a bit, is their focus. And what, why? Is it sinister? Is it because they want to sell us drugs? Possibly. I don't know. Or is it just ignorance? Ignorance is bliss. But they should not be ignorant because the, the, uh, the document is out there, written by the British Medical Journal, which totally disproves Ansel An An Keys. Ansel Keyes' theory. In fact, it was Ansel Keyes himself who disproved his theory, along with a guy called Ivan Franz. Uh, but, he, but they did not publish the findings because, in the words of Ivan Franz, they were disappointing. So, um, just one last thing on this particular topic is, um, I'm always kind of when, whenever I'm whenever I'm talking, I'm always kind of connecting what they say with analogies and stuff. And the, the way the doctors are with cholesterol really reminds me of the way people in the service industry are in Japan with procedures. So, you know, when, when someone starts a job at, say, a restaurant or a, a hotel or something like that in Japan, they'll get a list of steps. You know, this is how you greet the customer. This is how you take the order. This is how you do this, 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 this. Step one, two, three, through to ten or whatever it is. And for everything they'll do, they'll have a list of steps. And that's how they're trained, just follow the steps. And then, so when a, when a foreigner like me, who's used to being able to, you know, ask for things that are kind of out of the ordinary steps in, and I say to the service worker, hey, can you just, you know, give me the hamburger patties and, and not the buns or something like that, you know? And it's like, oh, oh. I don't, oh, I don't know what to do. Hang on. That's not in the steps. And that, that comes, it just reminds me of the way the doctors are. It's like, well, I, no, I can't talk about anything else until we sort out this LDL thing because that's the steps. That's what we have to do. That's the way we've been trained. It's just, it, it just for me, it feels a little bit childish. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I believe in America, is it, or maybe everywhere, they have something called the sound of care, which is the, what they have to do um, and they can't they cannot think for themselves outside the box they are brainwashed into the the, the standard of care and as we know people like dr sean baker um, in the state he was actually um suspended for a while because he was thinking outside the box because what he was doing was um he's a surgeon i believe and he was telling people that uh, before surgery they needed to lose weight um so that he could remove whatever it was that was offending but what actually happened was that they went away and did low carb and then they didn't come back for the surgery because low carb actually cured what he was supposed to be operating on so um basically the his hospital then was losing money so he ended up suspended which is absolutely crazy of course but um yeah but that was a classic case of the doctor thinking for himself hearing his patients instead of managing uh, uh, the with surgery and then getting into serious hot water for it, which, uh, where is the logic in that day? Where is it? Where is the logic? It's, that, uh, that's almost like the, the Dr. Gary Fedke thing about being disciplined, yeah. inappropriately reversing someone's type 2 diabetes. What's inappropriate about that? <laughs> exactly, yeah. And let's shut Professor Tim Noakes in, in South Africa into the equation as well, as well shall we? So I think he gave some, um, some uh, comment rather than uh, about was low carb okay for babies or infants or something? And he was he went through a court case and he was totally exonerated. And the great Zoe Harkin, uh, PhD from the UK, is, uh, was actually on, you know, gave evidence in favour of Professor Nose. But he went through hell to, to get there. The, all these doctors we're talking about, they've all thought outside the box. They've all broken the sand of care in one way or another. They've all been right, but they've all, they've all gone through hell. So, yeah, it's it's... The, the medical industry is, is seriously sick of itself at the moment. Um, and 
Is it because it's funded by a big pharmaceutical company? They want to sell drugs? Possibly. I don't know. It's, uh, they, you know, the, we're all, the, we, the carnival community, the, the jury is out on that. Uh, the, you know, the, is, it, is it sinister or is it ignorance? Or is it just plain mm. stupidity? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Um, wh- whatever it is, there's something rotten there, though, right? Um, you mentioned um, a study or some evidence. Did you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I will be. Okay, so this is the, the key evidence here. Is, as we know, the, the dietary part hypothesis was um, formulated by Ansel Keys, and I believe he was effectively man of the year or something in 1961 when they featured on Time magazine. So he did the, the fraudulent seven-nation study, which was, in fact, 22-nation uh, study, only seven studies uh, nations fitted in with his dietary heart hypothesis so basically he was the father of the the low fat high carb movement um, basically replaced saturated fat with um the vinaic acid um the seed oils which as we know in the carnival community are the root of all evil along with fructose um and then in 90 from 1968 to 1973 he and a guy called Ivan Frantz carried out a study called the Minnesota Coronary Experiment, which was going to prove that Ansel Keys was a genius and that um, basically the uh, saturated fat was the, the key driver of, um, and cholesterol was a key driver of heart disease. So they did a really good, really good systematic study which for five years of, on nearly 10,000 people. And actually, they discovered that the reverse was true. The coronary uh, infarctions went up in the those who were given the linoleic acid uh, in the form of the seed oils, and those who were given the high fat, saturated fat diet. They uh, their their risk of coronary event came down. You would think that because it was carried out by Ansel Keys, who is the father of the of the uh, low fat diet, and his co uh, sorry colleague um, Ivan France, you would have thought they they would have thought, oh, okay, right, we'll we'll, we'll pray. We will, um, what do you call it? We'll publish this and basically say no. But they didn't. They buried it. Why? Because in the words of Ivory France, the results were disappointing. So um, it only came to light, I believe, in 2016. So the document which I've been researching this morning, which is quite a long document, I haven't read right through it, I just read the conclusions, was actually done by the esteemed British Medical Journal in 2016, and I've sent, uh, sent you a copy of that, and I've sent the copy to my colleague here, Carl Day, in the UK Carnival Nation, and I've also sent one to our great friend, Barry, Carnival Soldier, over in the States. So hopefully, on the different platforms, yours, um, Barry's, and Carl, we can actually start getting this document out there. Now, every carnival should be made aware of it, and they should read it, and every medical professional should also read it, because on the top of the document, it's set intended for for health professionals, and yet they don't seem to read it. It seems to be still buried. It should be earth-shattering headline news, but they don't seem to want to publish it. And this is the BMJ we're talking about. Well, this is not some, you know, this is not some um, magazine or some journal. Some it's not Time magazine. Or anything. This is a, an esteemed, an esteemed, esteemed outfit, but it's not getting out there. This is what makes me think that there is something sinister behind it, because if, if they did publish it, then a lot of very large food corporations and a lot of very large pharmaceutical trillion uh, corporations, trillions of dollars, would, would actually be under threat. So this is what makes me believe that, yeah, yeah we are facing sinister rather than ignorant forces here. Hmm. You, you just imagine if... Um... Tomorrow on the news, they said, we've realized that um, seed oils are bad for you. If it was on the news, you have to stop eating seed oils. You know, there's a study being done. We found out that the seed oils are bad. And if you're taking statins, we've found out that actually your high cholesterol is probably healthy for you. And uh, the statins have a lot of side effects and probably giving you dementia right now and wasting away your muscles. You need to stop taking them. What, what would happen? 
so many people, like businesses would just cease to exist. People would go out of, go out of, um, be out of work. It would be, be crazy. Like, that's why for me, it feels like this is, you know, they're just never going to give it up. They can't. It's, it's, it's following money. There's just too much, too much invested in it. It's simple as that. There's too much invested in the dietary, uh, dietary heart hypothesis. You think about all the takeaway foods that, uh, that people eat, McDonald's, KFC, um, Domino's Pizza, they're all based on, you know, on, on high, high carbohydrate and low fat. They're all poison, basically. So all the frying now, I believe, in McDonald's is done in seed oils. Uh, just about every kebab house, you know, it's, it's all seed oils. It's you know, all the takeaway business out there. They're all they're all based on on you know on the the, the guidelines, the, the the high high carb. If we if we suddenly say that actually high carb is bad for you, and we should be going back to saturated fat. Is, as you say, people are going to lose their jobs. And there's going to be you know there's trillions of dollars at, uh, at stake here. So I don't know. I haven't got the answer. To that. I just know I just know what the problem is. But I certainly haven't got the answer to it other than. Working with yourself and people like Carl and Paul, uh, UK Carnival Guy and Larry, Carnival Soldier, maybe John Carnival backwards. If we if we can actually just get all of those and DC learning to live as well, of course he's he's um, taken off. If we can just get the Carnival community on board and, and grow the Carnival community from grassroots revolution, then maybe the world has a chance. If they si if they silence us, um, then the world hasn't got a chance, and we're just going to be fat and sick. As I was in March of 2022, uh, which I'm not anymore. But I've got hobby high cholesterol apparently, so they want to sell me drugs. So this is another good. You're making a lot of good points here tonight, George, that are setting me off. It's another good point. Um, when I was at the doctor, you know, it's it, it's always hobby oh, cholesterol, and it's like, hang on, look at me. I I've never looked and felt as healthy as I do now. I my body has never had this kind of muscle composition that it has now. I've never had a belly that doesn't stick out before in my life. But you know, cholesterol's a problem. So so before my cholesterol was great, but I looked like a broken down Volvo before, you know. So <laughs> Yeah, I believe, I can't remember who was it said it, but it was one of our, I can't remember phrase. Um, a patient cured is a customer lost. So they're not interested in the fact that you cured yourself, you cured yourself. They're really interested in trying to make money. And the only thing they've got left they can make money from is high cholesterol. So they're, so they're basically picking on that because they want to sell you pharmaceuticals so they can get all their backhanders from the pharmaceutical companies and so they can get all the funding um, uh, Funded by, or sorry, all the research funded by um, the the pharmaceutical companies, and of course all the sugar companies. Coca Cola apparently spends something three times the amount on um, medical uh, research, no, fake research, um, and the than the the actual medical industry itself does. So yeah, uh, you know, a patient here is no good to that. They want to manage. They want to manage your illnesses with um, with, uh, with with drugs. And yeah, to just go back to what you said about about the, the belly as well. You know, I was massively overweight, and again, you know, people call it a beer belly, but I prove that doesn't exist because I I still drink beer uh, on a fairly regular basis, and I no, I now have a very flat belly. I have don't have the overhang anymore, which I had. Oh, that's another thing, by the way. I wish I've uh, another benefit. Uh, I was watching Kelly Hogan this morning, and I think anybody who knows her story knows that she was plagued with boils, and as I was as well. I'm my because where my belly overhang my, uh, my waistline, it, it caused you know, uh, skin on skin friction. And also where my thighs were so fat, they rubbed together. So I suffered really badly from boils on my waistline, belt line, and also on my inner thighs. Gone, completely gone since, uh, since going carnival. So yeah, that's, a, that's just another classic benefit, or that, which I forgot to mention earlier. So, that, that's an interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. I talked to someone just yesterday, um, Susan, um, and uh, from ketogen, a ketogenic Susan. She, um, she, her balls are completely gone. Yeah, so she went yeah. kind of board, gone. Yeah, and also the uh, fungal infections as well. The, the I think the ones that are known as athlete's foot and jock itch, 
it's actually called tinea is the fungus uh, that like my thief has just gone completely now as well so yeah the, the, the benefits of carnival are just unfathomable they they really are and as we know dc learning to live is you to fight cancer as is um jeff de phosphorus a friend of kerry man yeah we've got to get the message out there dave this is why i've reached out to you again but i said the yeah. most important most important thing from the, this interview is that, that is that we we're going to be faced with a uh tidal wave of of static basically because all of our carnival community are going to have the next blood test done and their ldl cholesterol will be raised there is no question about that. There's, a, there's a young lady on our whatsapp group here in the uk who posted her results the other day i think they tried this one point two or something her her diaper or hba1c was 33 um and yet her LDL. And just to be clear, these are these are in the UK measurements. Right? Sorry, UK measurements. Yeah, absolutely. So I can't, I can't do that. But but the threshold for high cholesterol, total cholesterol, is fine. Now this young lady has perfect health. Is in perfect health now. In fact, you've been, um, you've actually spoken to her. She's done an interview on this channel. But her cholesterol, total cholesterol, is five point three, which actually is regarded as high cholesterol. I think because it was only 0.3 above the threshold, I don't think she was off the static. But um, yeah, that, that's it's interesting because she is clearly the, the image of perfect health, and yet her, she's clearly an naughty carnival as well because her cholesterol is slight, just slightly wrong. So what can you do? So um, what we what do you think are some good next steps for everyone, whether they're a carnivore for a long time, they're a long-term carnivore, or they're just getting started? Do you think um, we should be all reading this study? Do you think there are any other steps we should be taking if we're preparing to go and see our doctor? Yeah, I mean, um, it's critical thinking, isn't it? Ask the question, why don't, no, what, what would be the benefit of a statin? Why, uh, oh, like, as you said, it piece of low, 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 low cholesterol. Okay, so what's the benefits of lowering cholesterol? Well, actually, it reduces the, the risk of coronary disease. Ah, but I've read the Minnesota coronary experiment um, in, the, in the BMJ, and these are the findings of the BMJ. So, yeah, I would say that our best weapon in that armory is the BMJ um, uh, Minnesota coronary experiment, uh, which is a document which I sent you. But having said that, if you're on YouTube, there's also lots of um, stuff about the, the MCE the Minnesota Coronary Experiment on YouTube as well. So you don't have to read a fairly long document because there are other um, medical or scientists out there, researchers out there who've already done the, done the work for us. So yeah, go on to YouTube. Just get that, get familiar with the Minnesota Coronary Experiment. Get familiar with the fact that Ansel Keys was behind it, the guy who did the dietary heart hypothesis, so he disproved his own hypothesis, and throw that in the face of your doctor. Tell them to go away and read it. Because they're supposed to anyway. Yeah, so I would say that that is our number one weapon in our armory when it comes to pushing back against uh, drug pushers, basically. Nice. And if I could just put a plug in here for one of my other video interviews. Um, if uh, people haven't already, one of the interviews they should really go and watch is the one with Malcolm Kendrick, Dr. Malcolm Kendrick because he makes some really good points um, along the lines you've been talking about today, George, like people with high LDL or high cholesterol overall likely are going to have a longer life and do much better than people who have lower cholesterol. Um, and, uh, yeah, his, his book, The Clot Thickens, is well worth a read. Absolutely. Well, you just actually summed up what this message is. Those with high cholesterol are like have a longer life than high cholesterol. This is simple as that. Though. You just actually encapsulated the whole the whole message there, basically. So thank you very much for that. And, you know, we just got to get this out there to as, as many people as possible. I know that you have, I think you're, you're up to 47K subscribers at the moment. That's not a bad start. And so, and then if everybody of those 47K subscribers then shares it with their own people. Um, and... You know, I've, I've, I've sent it to Carl and Larry as well. So Carl will take care of here in the UK. I'm hoping Larry will take care of um, uh, the state. And, you know, we we just got to share the message. We, we, we've got to let the people know that the science is out there, but it's been deliberately buried. It was deliberately buried for 
two decades, was it? No, three decades, I think. So 2016, it was actually emerged. And, and, and so we are eight years down the line, but they're still burying it. They are still not sharing it as they as wide as, as they should do. Yeah. Just to add one more thing to this, um, one really important thing to remember when your doctor is saying to you, oh, LDL is going to give you heart disease. LDL is going to cause atherosclerosis. Finally, I can say that word. Um, the, <laughs> it's going to cause atherosclerosis. Um, it, it isn't actually possible for LDL on its own to do that because there's something in your arteries called the endothelium. And this is what I learned from Malcolm Kendrick. And the endothelium has tight junctions. It's, it's put together in a way that nothing can get past it to get to the artery wall. And um, so LDL can't push past the endothelium to get in there, just like nothing else can. Um, the only thing that can break that endothelium is Ebola. And if you get if it breaks, that's why... 80% of the people that get Ebola die because okay. the body's starting to break down if something can get through the endothelium. So LDL doesn't get into the artery wall like that. So that's also important to remember. You know, if your doctor's being really stubborn, you can always say, well, how does LDL get through the endothelium? Explain that one. Yeah. Mm. You brought me on to another subject now, and this is um, I learned from Dr. Paul Mason on LDL. If you find he's on, basically the cycle of LDL is um, uh, governed by the liver. It's the, the the liver actually sends out the low density or the lipoproteins, the low density lipoproteins, and they're not actually cholesterol. They are carriers for cholesterol. Uh, they actually carry cholesterol triglycerides and one other thing. I can't remember off the top of my head now. I have to look at it again. But they actually come out of the liver as a chylo micron ultra low density LDL. And then they go through a life cycle, which takes them to very low density LDL, through intermediate density LDL, and then LDL. And these particles, these lipoproteins, go around the body, delivering cholesterol to the cells because it's, it's absolutely essential for life, is, is the cholesterol. And they also do, do the energy in the form of triglycerides. Um, but obviously, if you're not eating much glucose, then the, uh, the triglycerides, uh, triglycerides are much lower and you're, you're running ketone, ketones. But then the, the key thing here is, Dave, there is there's something called an APOB100, um, which is a, an identification marker on the outside of the lipoprotein. When it returns safely to the liver, it, this is a, like a, a swipe entry card. And if the liver recognizes it as a safe um, and successful lipoprotein, it takes it back in for recycling. However, the, the reason that LDL has got a, um, a bad wet is because as it travels around the, the bloodstream, then it can get damaged. And there are two sources of damage. One is oxidative stress and the other is glycation. Glycation is when you have uh, a high carbohydrate diet. You've got a lot of sugar in the blood. And basically, the, the sugar damages the LDL and it damages the APOB100, which means that the liver can no longer recognize it. Um, so the LDL is stranded out in the bloodstream, it's lost, it's just going round and round. And then the body has something called a macrophage, which sends it to eat the LDL and then turns it into a foam cell. And is it in fact that foam cell of the damaged small denser uh, LDL that, uh, that actually causes the, the arterial, uh, arterial plaque? So yeah, LDL is kind of involved in, um, in it, but only, only if you damage it. If it's not damaged, it's perfectly healthy. And certainly, I don't know, in, in our blood tests on the NHS, there is no, they don't differentiate between small damage LDL and large buoyant um, healthy LDL. But the assumption is that because we're on carnival and that we, we're getting high cholesterol uh, results, and because we're so damned healthy, the assumption is that it's basically large, you know, the, the, large, the healthy LDL. So they're trying to actually, um, they're trying to destroy the body's energy deli delivery system with their satins. That's crazy. Really crazy. Anyway, uh, yeah, just to remind everybody, Dr. Paul Mason, uh, look up Dr. Paul Mason on cholesterol or LDL, APOB 100, uh, and he's got a great video. It's only about 20 minutes, but he explains the, the cycle of, of LDL from the time it leaves the liver to the time it safely returns to the liver and what happens when it doesn't safe, safely return to the liver. So, yeah, that's... Um,
you you just reminded me of another story then by talking about apo b so um that last time i was in the uh the doctor's office arguing with him about why is ldl dangerous why you know blah 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 and when he he could when he realized he wasn't getting anywhere with me he looked back at his report that he had and he went well your apo b is high i'm worried about that and it's like but if my LDL's high, my OPB is going to be high. Of course. And that's an integral part of the LDL. Yeah. And it's just, this is a constant moving of the goalposts until he gets his point across the way he wants to get it across. And so as, as people going in to see their doctor, they need to be aware that, you know, you, you're going to face resistance and it's, um, as I described in the video that I had, it's not the kind of resistance that's a, a reasoned argument. It's the kind of resistance like, you know, a cat kicking up its kitty litter to make dust, right? It's like yeah, exactly. getting as much yeah. dust into the air as possible so that you don't know what, you know, where was the argument? What were we talking about again? Exactly. I have an analogy here as well, because actually, as you probably know, I'm an ex-soldier. And basically... Um, it's a smoke screen. We would we used to get actually smoke grenades back in the day, so that when we were advancing on the enemy, we could we could actually chuck the smoke grenades out in front of us, and then they they wouldn't be able to see us, see us to shoot us. It's called a smoke screen, and I think that is a smoke screen is exactly what you are describing there. So yeah, it's, oh, I totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah. So um, I will I will put all of the links to everything, including Dr. Paul Mason, Zoe Harkham. Um, and uh, into the video of uh, Malcolm Kendrick and to the study that we've been talking about and everything. Yeah, as I said, I, 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 I sent you the study for a short notice just now because I didn't think about sending it until about a uh, quarter hour before this, so you'll find it in your inbox. Uh, awesome. So, yeah, I'll link to all of those. And, uh, yeah, forewarned is forearmed. Yeah, and also, if you, uh, if you just quick look up the Minnesota, the Minnesota Coroner Experiment on YouTube, and uh, see if you can find something suitable to add to that list as well, as well as the document, mm -hmm. because the document is obviously a very dry reading and it's very long. But if you can find somebody who's already studied it and um, has enca uh, encapsulated the message, then that would be useful, truly useful as well. The other thing with, that we, we, the other guy we haven't touched on is, of course, Nick Norbit, the Oreo man. Do you know what I'm talking about? Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, um, he's, he's, Could you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, Nick Orbitz is a PhD, I think, I believe, from Harvard University. Um, and he and the guy called Dave Feldman, I think, they uh, they they are trying to debunk the, the LDL uh, myth, basically. So Nick used himself as his own N equals one experiment. Uh, he's what he calls a lean mass hyperresponder, so he's got high um, high LDL. Uh, so experimented with statins to lower his LDL he deliberately he didn't believe in statins but he did it as an experiment and there was a, a slight lowering of LDL whatever but then he came off the statins got his LDL back up and he experimented by eating for I can't remember how many weeks it was but eating I think two sleeves of Oreos a day and his statins uh, sorry his LDL went through went through the floor he lost I, I think the, the the Oreos the glucose was three times more effective at lowering his, his LDL than, than the, the medical drug was. So the, you know, obviously it's becoming a joke in the carnival community now. If we, uh, uh, the doctors should be prescribing his Oreos, not, not statins. But of course, because we, we're aware of the dangers of the glucose, we would never eat the Oreos. And, um, Nick took one for the carnival team, if you like, by, by doing that. But he's back to being, being his healthy and carnival self again now. Nick Norvitz, I believe his name is. N-O-R-W-I-T-Z, Norvitz, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll. Uh, he he's got a YouTube channel as well, so I'll link to. Yeah, but also, Doctor Sean Baker is flagging him up, um, you know, massively at the moment as well. So yeah, you can, you can find it through Sean Baker as well as through his own, through his own channel. I'm subscribed to both both Nick's and Sean's channels, so mm. I get to see it. And right. also, the other great proponent of it is old guy Carnival Mitch over in Florida. He's um he's on the case with the uh, the Oreos as well. I, th I think the the really important thing here is to for everyone to know that you know 
even if your doctor's fighting you about your LDL or your cholesterol generally, you're not alone. There's a lot of there's a lot of good information out there from people who have degrees in this stuff, who have PhDs in this stuff, that uh, you know you can you can find support with you know just in absolutely yeah all their videos can do from that point of view but don't forget the carnival community as well because we are growing and we are becoming more um uh active if you like you had um paul the uk carnival guy on the you actually just posted the videos there i watched it and as he said he's the head of the the uk whatsapp group uh about 100 strong them, and, and we all share information on there together we all we all compare our experiences some of them this is sweetest at least especially with the, the good old nhs we compare recipes or you know, food ideas we compare health we're a support group, um, and as Paul said, you know, we've got about 100 members on there, but we're not, even though we're called Carnivals UK, I'd like to point out that we do have actually currently two American members on there as well, one of them being Larry, who gets everywhere, Carnival Sergeant. We've got a lady from Florida as well, so the, the you know, the, it's not, even though it's called Carnivals UK, you can join it through Paul's channel from, uh, from Australia, from, you know, from anywhere, anywhere in the world, basically. Uh, obviously, the time difference makes it, makes it a bit a bit awkward sometimes. But no, it's, um, it is the carnival community has to stand together internationally because we are an international revolution now. And so, any any platforms you know that where we can get together are useful. And we're finding this one very very useful to say to say the least. Well said, um, George. I really appreciate you coming on and and talking about this with me. Um, I, it's really, really valuable. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Dave. Thank you for, no, I reached out to you because I felt that you know I can we we together we can actually start getting this message out to people who are going to be bullied uh, because of their, of their LDL. Uh, we have to show them how to stand firm. We have to get the message out out there, and we have to get the message out to the doctors as well. But we can use use these people but these people can be our messengers who go out there and say actually no the current the minnesota coronary experiment shows that ansel keys was wrong and um, that you are now wrong in in your uh in, in, in what you're trying to pres prescribe me so yeah thanks very much for having me on david it's very it's a very important message this is a bit of an unusual one as much as a, a, a follow-up for me so it's not no not just my story but it's a story of the whole world at the moment cheers and uh, if you want to check out Dr. Malcolm Kendrick's video, you can do that here.